check the trajectory of our lives, every one of us, we will find out that we are here today, not necessarily because we chose him, but because he chose us. John said, we love him because he first loved us. And this is love he loved us and he gave his son for us over the last few weeks we've been treating the matter of heritages the matter of spiritual genealogies inheritances and last yesterday while we prayed and sought the face of the Lord, we saw, oh my, that there is a place where God has, or there is, yeah, a place where God has prepared for us as a heritage, and there is a life that is supposed to be a consequence of that heritage that he has prepared for us. And so, as a consequence to that, we are not supposed to live our lives as if we are just mere people who are just walking or just traversing the earth. We are a special breed of people. We are people cut out from the prophetic intent of God. God has prepared for us a people, a place rather. He has prepared for us a city. He has made us a prepared people and there is supposed to be that consciousness that should be a part of our everyday reality, particularly because there is a posture that we are supposed to assume simply because he chose us. And I pray for you this afternoon that it will be your experience that you will know him you will know him and you will know him thank you lord now as you very well know today is a holy communion service and um, there are a few things that we would want to look at in scripture before we um, going to the communion service proper and um, this will for me be like a, an addition um, of all the things that God is doing in our lives everything that he is doing in our lives every single thing and I want to take the messages the teachings even the prayer um, point that come out from this place in this season with all amount of seriousness because they seem to form for us a, a cause, to forge for us a cause on which we should work properly. And I'll show you a few things in scripture this evening. We'll trust that the Lord will help us. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Thank you, Holy One. Okay, so let us do Bible study for maybe 30 minutes. Then, after the Bible study, mm, probably, God will help us and we will go into the place of prayer. I want to... So... Uh, uh, now, let me give you a background. Hold off first, okay? Join me after 30 minutes. Let me give you a background of the thing that we want to discuss um, this evening. So, we've been looking at Luke chapter 9, and we have, from there, I was able to show you how that when Jesus prayed at the Mount of Transfiguration, 
and he was joined by Moses and Elijah, and they spoke of his decease, which he would accomplish in Jerusalem. If we look at it carefully, what we get to see is the obvious fact that Jesus um, or Moses and Elijah both had a part of their ministry with which Jesus represented and accurately represented in the, in the very sense of the word. So Moses represented what part of that dispensation? The law, right? And if you look at the law, you would see that the law had so many things in it. The law was a dispensation. The law was... It's not merely in the commandments. The law had to do with everything that had the law in it. In the feasts, the law was contained in, or the feasts were contained in the law. The tabernacle was contained in the law. The commandments were contained in the law. So that when you look at the law and all the things that come with it, nothing fulfills them so perfectly like Jesus does. If you look at the tabernacle of Moses, even Jesus himself described, described himself as a temple. Right? The purpose of the tabernacle in Exodus chapter 25, the reason why God gave the tabernacle was because he wants to dwell amongst his people. Are you getting what I'm saying? The tabernacle of Moses was not for the people to gather inside and to, to just, it was not what we have today, where that we can now come and we have a place to sit down. That was not what the tabernacle of Moses was. In fact, properly speaking, the only place that had a covering, the entry into that place was, was limited. Every other person that gathered at the tent of meeting stayed under the open heaven. So the tabernacle of Moses was not to host people as it was to host God. The significance of the tabernacle of Moses was to host what? God. And God said, let them build me a tabernacle. Let them build me a tabernacle so that I may dwell in their midst. I may dwell amongst them. I may dwell amongst them. You know what that is? That's Emmanuel. God with us. And in fact, their formation was supposed to be, um, was to be supposed to put the tabernacle in perspective so that the way they, li they lived in their camps around, was supposed to be around the tabernacle. It was a beautiful thing. I've taught it in the past. Have I taught it recently here? Have I, have I taught it recently here? If you look at the tabernacle of Moses, you'll find out that there were 12, you know there were 12 tribes of Israel, right? So these 12 tribes of Israel, they were all surrounded, they were surrounded around the tabernacle. And, they, and the way God surrounded them, it was, it was so interesting because they were not all the same population. They had different strengths in their population. So when they gathered around the tabernacle, what, in fact, if you looked at them fr um, from an aerial view, you know what aerial view is. If you look at them from an aerial view, um, retrospectively, what I mean by using the privilege of hindsight, what you will see, the formation you will see will give you the cross. That's, that's what you would see, to give you the cross. It was such a beautiful arrangement that even the people in question or even the people that were involved in it had no idea what God was doing. So that when Balaam stood on the mountain, because Balak, Balak said, there's a place that you will stand and you will see them at once. That way you can easily curse them. When he saw them, the guy began to prophesy. Because their formation alone was, was compact. In their formation, in their formation, Jesus was represented. The tabernacle was to host the presence of God, as we would see later on in Scripture, that God or that Jesus 
His name shall be called Jesus, for he will um, save his people from his sins. And Matthew now told us that this was to reveal, to fulfill the prophet, the prophecy that um, um, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. So, in, with respect to the law, Jesus was a representation of the law in that respect. However, when it comes to the prophets, you also see that Jesus is also a representation of the prophets. Nobody was a prophet if they did not prophesy about the Messiah. I'm telling you. In fact, there was, some, there was one prophet like that now. The guy that, um, this is a Faniah now. The guy that we referred to yesterday when we, when we saw that Herod prophecy, that was the only prophecy that he gave in his career that had to do, there were others that gave multiple prophecies about the Messiah, but that was the only prophecy he gave in his career, and it was about the place where he would be born. I'm saying that when we saw Moses and Elijah, what we saw were representations or like, what I would now want to term genealogies, the, 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 the order with which the ministry of Jesus was to follow after. And we see in scripture that Jesus himself declared his manifesto from the written scripture. He declared his manifesto from the written scripture. He showed us in the written scripture what he came to do. Later on, when John the Baptist was not really sure, he sent his guys said, Help me ask him, is he the one who is to come or do we expect another? He referred them to the scripture. All right. So there is, that's what we've been looking at. And I need you to understand that when you are talking about your own spiritual genealogies, because one thing that you should not as a believer do is to live your life as if you are normal. You are not normal, Lou. You are not normal. Don't stop living your life as if you are normal. You are not normal. There is the will of God that is captured within the pages of scripture on your account. And it is your responsibility to do what? To find it. It's your responsibility to find it. And over the weeks, I've been showing you that there are so many manifestations of this thing. You do not have to be a pulpit minister. You don't even have to be at the forefront of the, of, of, of the battle. As long as you are able to locate your assignments, to locate, to find yourself in the written word of God, that is the most significant encounter a person can, can have in his life. There is no encounter. Listen to me. A believer cannot be read, cannot be, cannot be empty of encounters. It's not, it's not something that is permissible for the believer. You cannot be a believer and you are rid of encounters. You are just normal. Your life is just like the sun that rises in the morning and you have not met God. You have not met the word of God. Nothing supernatural has happened to you. And, and, and I need you to understand that the life of a man, Jesus himself said, does not consist of the things he possesses materially. God will have to meet you and my own prayer, the motivation for my prayer used to be that, and it still is, there were people that God met in scripture that did not pray for them to meet him or for him to meet them, yet he met them. When we saw in Acts chapter 7 that the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham, do you think Abraham held a revival meeting or went for a retreat and was expecting the, the encounter from God? He wasn't. People did not expect him and he came for them. Look at Samuel. Samuel was even running in the opposite direction. Yet God was still going after him. Look at Moses. There were people that God encountered in scripture that did not pray for an encounter. I have a head start. And 2 Peter tells us, situates for us, the kinds of encounters that we should, we should crave for. It is the encounter that comes from the word of God. We have a more sure word of what? Prophecy. Whereunto we do well if we take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arises in our heart. 
There is no greater encounter than that a man can receive than the encounter that comes from the word of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by the proceeding word of God. And Jesus had to show us that this thing is important, so much so that he situated it in the book. And you need to, you, you need to. All right? So, um, Luke chapter 1, against this backdrop, now that we are considering genealogies, so you, you have a good idea what the genealogy is. You have a good idea what it is, right? Okay. And the genealogy I'm talking about is the one that you will find in scripture. It's not the shall genealogy that, that my own, uh, ah, that this man used to pursue um, Hebrew spirits with broom. And it seems as if God is calling me after that order of hunting demons and pursuing them with broom. That's not what I'm talking about. Anything that has to do with extra biblical experiences is not backed up by the spirit of God. I know that we are a very spiritual people, and by spiritual, like you know that kind of spiritual church that the First Corinthian church was. You know the First Corinthian church. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Give me First Corinthians chapter twelve, and uh, beginning from verse one, he says that now concerning spiritual gifts. Now, if you look at this, if you have a good Bible, what you will find out that the word gifts is italicized. It's in italics, right? Aha, uh -huh. that means. What, what is here actually properly, <laughs> properly read should be concerning spiritual, brethren. I will not have you ignorant. Verse 2, ye know that you were Gentiles carried away onto these dump idols even as you were led. So it tells us that this Corinthian church, they were not just a normal people. They already had allegiances to dump idols. They, they knew the spirit realm. It's like if you, have, if you come to my village, the average guy from my village has access into the spirit realm. He knows. Recently, when I went in December, I was told that there is what to do to make people in the compound begin to quarrel. You just find out that they just wake up in the morning and they begin to quarrel. They t One of my uncles told me that. But we went to, my sister was to do her introduction, so we went somewhere to, there was a particular ingredient in the, something that you don't find in the open market. So we went to the back of somewhere, and so we saw the, the thing. They now say, see this something. I said, yes, see if you remove the seed, three, like this, and you throw it on the ground, eh, before they sweep the compound. People will wake up that morning, in the, and they will start. So you see there are some quarrels that, that, <laughs> that were orchestrated from the spiritual. When people begin to foray into the spirit realm like that, and then they give their life to Christ and they come to church. You have to, the man while you used to train them will not be your, <laughs> because they have already touched the spiritual. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hey. So that's exactly how the apostle Paul was able to introduce this curriculum to the Corinthian church. You have already touched the spirit realm, but I need you to understand that you are ignorant of it. Even though you have touched it, you are still ignorant of it. And I will not have you being ignorant. Because if the devil leads you into the spirit realm, he leads you into darkness. And listen to me, and I need to sound this warning very, very strong to everyone who has an ear to hear. There, I know that today you don't need to go to the bush to meet the devil. He's in church now. There are people that have opened churches today in the name of the Lord, but what they are doing is sorcery. And you don't even need to look too far. You, they are everywhere. They are on YouTube. They are, they are all over the place. And then when somebody comes to advertise and says that, you see, if you want to marry, come, there's something that the man of God will do for you. He will bat you. You know those kinds of things that they... Are you with me? You, if you attend a church where they bat you first, before they do something for you, they bat you. You want to have a child, they give you something to eat. If you eat apple, then you drink small kai kai inside. 
And you know those guys, I, I, I see all those kinds of stuff going all, around all over the place. That is darkness. It is darkness. It is darkness. And I'm not here saying those things don't work or whether they work. If they don't work, people will not patronize them. It's actually because they work that people patronize them. And if, if you are pushed so much to the wall that you decide that it is the way of darkness that you want to go to, the devil never gives you something for free. He doesn't. He doesn't. Do. And oftentimes, after they have been led astray by these dumb idols, it is now the pastor that has been warning them since morning. I don't go after that side. That now has to be dealing with. That is why when I begin to have those issues come my way, the first question I ask is, who is your pastor? Go to him. I cannot reap where I did not sow. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Hey, go to him. Let him deal with it. By the message of God, I try to be consistent and faithful to the thing that God has called me to do. And if it happens to be the case that you are a believer, you are a believer and you know the counsel of the Lord. Not that you came from the world and then you want to be delivered. You know the counsel of the Lord. You have, you have tasted of eternal life and then you decided to go after the way of darkness. Your matter is on the Lord's table. So, I, and so I'm talking about genealogies or spiritual genealogies. I'm talking about the thing that God has ordained for you to do in keeping with his will and you find out that none of these things is original to you. So let us, having that understanding, look at Luke chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 5. Luke's gospel chapter 1, beginning from verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abia. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. How? Blameless. These were people that were not walking in the dispensation of grace. And they were walking before the Lord and they were blameless. And I'm not intending to shame anybody here. But I'm telling you that the, the, the demands of God, the demands of God are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. They're not too difficult to adhere to. Are you getting me? These guys did not have the Holy Spirit. They did not pray in tongues. Yet. The testimony of the Holy Spirit about their lives was that they were walking in the ordinances of the Lord and they were blameless. There was no grace to aid them. It means that if you have grace, you should do better. If you have grace, you should do better. Grace, therefore, cannot be the license for you to do anyhow. Maybe just flex. They just do anyhow. Grace cannot be the license for that to happen. They were walked in the, in the ordinances of the Lord and they were blameless. But they had a problem. The problem was that they had no child. And the reason why they did not have any child because that Elizabeth was barren. So Elizabeth was the problem here, if I'm, if I'm permitted to use that word, right? Elizabeth, Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. So the man, um, um, Zacharias, maybe he didn't even know, and medical science was not as developed as it is now, for you to be able to know where the problem is coming from. So if somebody, if a couple were, were barren, at best, they would say that the Lord has not opened the womb of the, the woman in question. Because infertility is 50-50. Is it can happen on the side of the woman. It can happen from the side of the man. The fact that the couple um, have, because I hear, I hear all kind of nasty comments. It, can, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't come out from among the company of the believers. If two people, husband and wife, and I need to make it very clear, two people, husband and wife, in the body of Christ or in your local church assembly have been married over an, a period of time and you are counting for them because you know that is normal. It's a, it's a very normal thing. You can't do anything about it. There are people that, as, even as they are bringing the wedding gifts, they are bringing baby baths, diaper. If you did wedding, you know what I'm talking about. 
There are people that the very day of your wedding, they will, they will send you baby things. Now, if that is the case, that after you have gotten married, you people are observing, <laughs> and the people are coming check, I know it's still the same one. Okay, maybe let's give it like two weeks. In, in your mind, though, this is the discussion that they are having. Sometimes it's even unconscious. Then it happens to be the case that after like six months, eight months, nine months, 15 months, the couple is not bringing forth. The, I need you to understand that there could be so many reasons why that could be the case. Number one, it is not your business. That's number one. If it happens to be so much your business that it is troubling you every time you see it. No, I'm, and I'm not joking about it. Because there are intercessors amongst us. <laughs> if it happens to be your business so much, and every time you see it, you are troubled. Ah, this couple. See, the most potent thing to do is to pray for them. And don't let them know you are praying. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you with me? Go to the place of prayer and say, my father, my father, concerning this, our brother and our sister, it, it has troubled my heart so much that they are without child. Please give them a child in your own time. That's okay. Don't be saying things like, ah, man, go marry man. No. See as man, don't go marry man. That kind of a thing should not be heard amongst brethren. It should not happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hey, so that it will not be said that I didn't say it. Because by the message of God, our brethren are getting married amongst ourselves. There is no competition. See, look at you, all of you. Are here. How many... Who remembers when your parents gave birth to you after their marriage? Is it a discussion today? And it happens to be, sometimes it can be very depressing, very demoralizing, because many times people go through a lot of things, and they have no business sharing those details with you. If it troubles you so much, please pray for them. Pray for them. In the case of Zechariah and Elizabeth, the problem was that Elizabeth was barren. However... Zacharias, according to scripture, was blameless in the ordinances of the Lord that he did not attempt to find out where is this problem coming from. You know, there's a way men find it out. They will go and see, can I impregnate somebody else? If I go out and impregnate somebody, I say, okay, so now this woman will be the, the problem. They now look for a way to edge her out of the house. And I'm going to, if God willing, let me tell you, but maybe I, now that it has come up, let me just address it now. See, these issues, it, uh, when you get married and you begin to trust the Lord for a child or however, there are times when your expectation may not be met at the time when you desire for it to be met. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is something that should be more important to you. It should be the word of God. That is why over and above what your desire is, strive to catch what the word of the Lord is first. If your desire is that the night that you married, that night, that night, you want to conceive. That, I mean, that's, those are the desires of people. That is on their ninth month anniversary that they give birth to their child. And it happens that after your wedding, it didn't happen in the first month. It didn't happen in the second month. Instead of throwing, running into despair and begin to do unrighteous things, because when you people were cutting, you used to send you a message. Yeah, you, you smile like Jesus. Oh, this is your nose is the, is the will of the Lord. And all, all of those things, if you, do not tend, if you do not tend to those fires that burned in your heart, eh, this small challenge that will pass will kill it, will kill that marriage. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? And... Let me tell you, as long as, by the grace of, grace of God, you are under this covenant, the devil cannot have a stake in your marriage. He can't. So don't think that the devil can decide and say you will not have a child. I'll show him I can have 12. <laughs> Just because we fear God. <laughs> uh, uh, that's the truth. The devil cannot... He can't. We will have children when we want to have them. We will stop having them when we do not want to have them. It is completely, the, the devil does not have, he's not a shareholder in our marriage. Do you understand what I'm saying? We didn't go to the shrine to cut, our, to cut covenant with Satan. So the devil cannot, no matter how intentional darkness is, they can't win in our home. 
It's not possible. It's not. So don't, don't allow, don't ever allow the devil play with you. Don't let it happen. Okay, so they said that Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both well stricken in years. Okay, next verse. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his cause, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and feared fell upon him but the angel said unto him fear not zacharias for thy prayer is heard and thy wife elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name what john and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well struck him in years. Okay, so I had to run through that reading so that I can have time to make the point I want to make. So we are told here that it was the hour of prayer. And after his course, after his duty, after his responsibility, not like we come here and everybody has his responsibility. There's the person that is to take opening prayer. There's the person that is to, you know, handle the camera. There's the person that is to do what he wants to do. All right? Now, the course of Zacharias, the duty of Zacharias, the responsibility of Zacharias that day was to burn incense. And while he was burning incense, there was prayer that was going on outside. While that was going on, the angel of the Lord uh, appeared to him on the right side of the table of the altar of incense, by the side of the table of the shoe bread. That's what, that's what it is. All right? And then said unto him that your prayers have been answered. I can imagine that Zechariah is asking, which one? Because after he heard what the angel said, his response was clear that this was not, this prayer was not the prayer he was praying that day. Are you with me? We, and we, which which um, seems to say something. Husbands, young men, listen to me. If you get married, you and your wife have decided that, okay, we are ready to have a child. And the child is not coming as you both have desired. As the man, your duty is to pray for your wife. That's your duty. The woman, I assure you, is going through a whole lot already. But you, you, you should never remind her and say, so when are you getting pregnant? Because this thing I'm telling you now is what husbands do to their wives. I'm talking of children of God, though. I, I know a, a, a woman who was complaining that her husband was calling her barren. That's res irresponsibility of the highest order. The Bible tells us of Isaac that Isaac entreated the Lord on the behalf of his wife. Even though it took him 20 years for that to happen. I don't know why Isaac waited for 20 years before he had to pray for his, say, okay, Lord, please remember this woman. You know, she's been, she's been here for, tw <laughs> for 20 years. <laughs> but it took him 20 years, and he entreated the Lord on the behalf of his wife. So it's the responsibility of the man. Zechariah, we are told, was praying. He was praying. Don't, don't worry. Worry cannot be, should not be your first approach to situations. Are you getting what I'm saying? And if, I, I don't know why the Lord is bringing me in this direction, but if a, a couple, husband and wife, are expecting the fruit of the womb, right? It is not proper that the wife is the one praying more than the husband is praying. Because it is not, it is not supposed to be the case that the woman will need the child more than the man does. And I need you to understand that as a man, you should create a system of security around your home 
to make it clear both to your wife and to your family members that the place of this woman is not secured by the number of children she gives birth to, whether male or female. Because I, I've seen personally had patients who would come, and the reason why they are struggling very seriously to either give birth to a child or to give birth to a male child is so that their place in their husband's house will be secure. As a Christian man, that should never be a place where your wife is placed. Zechariah, Zechariah was a person who his wife and himself were going through difficulty, going through this difficulty. And the man was a man of God. But the Bible says, according to the ordinances of the Lord, both of them were blameless. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hello, are you with me? So God was not punishing them for something they did in their youth. Or it was not the punishment of God. Say, ah, my sister, if you don't take care now, if you do not live your life as a godly woman, when it is time for you to marry, you don't go get Pikino. No. The fact that the, that the couple are um, struggling with giving birth to children does not mean that in their single life, uh, the way, they went after the way of darkness, so now God is punishing them. That's not what it is. It should be the responsibility of the man to pray for his wife. And I need you to understand that there is no prayer that is prayed that God forgets. He will answer that prayer and he will answer it in his time. Are you getting me? The fact that you shouted while you prayed, you know what will make God to run. You know how you tell a child, come here, and the child come, and he's dragging his feet. And you just say, my friend, will you come? Then the child now runs to you. you that's not what. You will now say, God, I'm here. And then God say, I'm true. Make me quickly. Let me quickly respond. Pray. And know that you have prayed. Once you have prayed, keep praying. Don't fall into despair. Because the day will come when God will decide to answer your prayer. And in that day, it may not even be a prayer anymore. Because you probably have even given up on the situation. Which was the case of Zechariah in this day. So the Bible says that, that they said unto him, your prayers have been answered. And I can imagine that Zacharias is asking, which one? Which of your, my prayers have been, answered? have been answered? He says, your wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name what? John. Aha. So, thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, of course. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. People normally rejoice at the birth of a child. Talk less of a child like a John. That when people, you know, the Bible says of Elizabeth, that when she found out that she was pregnant, she hid herself. Is that so? Is that so? It's the way our sisters used to hide themselves when they are pregnant. They stop posting online. They just stop taking selfies. That's how Elizabeth hid herself. It was the God that made her pregnant that went and announced far in the north to her cousin that there was no group chat that they, she could announce and say, I don't carry Belel. No. The angel of the Lord went and met, met uh, Mary and said to Mary, Is not Elizabeth. I mean, I've been trying to hide myself so that people will not see what is happening. So it's not Elizabeth because it is with God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay? So, I'm saying that people normally rejoice at the birth of a child. Talk less of a child that someone like Elizabeth would give birth to. Many shall rejoice at his birth. He now went on to describe the man's life. And this is where I want us to pay attention to. He says that he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Number one. Number two, he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. So there are many compartments to this thing, all right? Um, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this is the work I want to do this, this morning, this evening rather. So when we, when we consider spiritual genealogies, and by spiritual genealogies, 
you get the point I'm, I'm making. When he gets to Jesus with Moses and Elijah, when he gets to um, um, John now, and we need to understand John in the context of verse 17, that he shall go before him how? In the spirit and power. In Malachi chapter 4 and in verse 6, God had given a prophecy through Malachi and said of John, or, or um, of, of the prophet that he would send. So let me see from verse 5. From verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. I will send you, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Aha. And verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite what? They ate with a curse. So he says, he shall come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. To turn the, the hearts of the fathers to their children. Okay? That's the word that the angel gave in Luke chapter 1 verse 17. That this child. So there are many compartments of this thing. And I need you to look. Let's look at them individually. So that when you are going to ask the Lord... For what is your portion? You want, to, you want to make sure that these boxes in your own life are checked. The first thing that we see is that the angel said of him that he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Number one. This thing is that he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. The meaning of that is that the, the perspective of God about this man is that he is great. Are you with me? And I've said this multiple, multiple times. But I need you to understand that what is important for, Eli, uh, for John here is not what people think of him as much as it is what God thinks of him. He might be small in the sight of the people. He might be insignificant in the sight of the people. He might be little in the sight of the people. But the testimony of, or his testimony before the Lord is that the man is what? Is great. So when you hear some certain John slanders, and I, 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 I trust the Lord, that I will handle that this evening. When you hear some certain John slanders, you know those John slanders that you used to hear? That, ah, John the Baptist was um, doing well until he began to talk with him, no concern him. That was how he lost his head. That John the Baptist would have been a great guy. But at a certain point in his life, he doubted Jesus. And because he doubted Jesus, he lost his head. That, ah, John the Baptist only fulfilled half of the things that he was supposed to fulfill because they said he shall come in the spirit and power. But he did not do miracle. So he did not come in the power. He only came in the spirit. Have you heard those kinds of things before? Aha! It is okay for people to say what they like about John. And John will, will not take it too much. He, will not go, he, won't, he won't consider it so much because the testimony was not that he will be great in the sight of the people. It is that he will be great where? In the sight of the Lord. So the posture of this man first, or his identity, or his, his reputation, his integrity, if you like, before the Lord is that he will be great. My question to you now is, what does the Lord think about you? If you want to go through scripture, you find out that there were a few people in scripture that God called a man of God. Do you know what it means for God to call you a man of God? That God says, this is my man. Okay. In Matthew chapter 11, let's read from verse 9. Matthew 11 from verse 9. Okay. 
okay. Maybe let me see from verse 7. Let me see what it says. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. This is the Lord now. This is the Lord. He began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. What went he out to the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But wait, what went he out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. You know soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothings are where? In king's houses. Okay. But what went he out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Let's come down here for a while. This is the Lord's testimony about the guy. And the first thing that the Lord calls him is who? A prophet. Okay. I'll ask you a question before I come back to this matter. What does the Lord call you? you know? Do you know? What does he call you? you have any idea what he calls you? Because the most important first, or the first primary um, identity of the man of God should not be his image before the people. What should it be? His integrity before the Lord. I remember some years ago, there was somebody like that. Um, I spoke to my father in the Lord about him. I asked, or I asked my father in the Lord about him. I said, This man, ah, he's a God's general. <laughs> the man's response was, He's not even a recruit. You know that there are, there are people, <laughs> there are people that we are calling. God's generals today. They are not even in man war. In, you know man war. If you went to NYSC camp, you know that there are different kinds of people. There is police in, the, in that place. There is evil defense there. There is um, um, there is the army. Then there is man war. Man war are those people that used to ginger you in the morning. You, if you went to camp, you know what I'm talking about. Early in the morning, they come and ginger you. So all these are people, they call them armed forces. Abi. Is man who armed forces? Paramilitary. Okay. Paramilitary. There are people that we are calling general today. Eh? They're not even in man war, in the spirit. What is important for you is not what people think you are. Are you with me? And, friends, listen to me. Listen to me strive to have a good image first before the Lord. Let God be your most important audience. That you may go to a place now and people will be looking at you and say, look at this one. What does he, what does he? Do you know that that was how they were looking at Elijah? You know that was how they were looking at Elijah? Elijah did not look like somebody that should be taken seriously. And I used to beg God, please. Let people not take me too seriously. Please. You know, and maybe God even heard the prayer and answered it before I was born because he gave me a face that you don't have to take seriously. Right? So, so, you may look at me and think I'm your junior brother. And it is okay. That's completely fine. Okay. But I pray and say, God, please, let people not take me too seriously. And before you, I am Sabinus. You know, <laughs> like God is looking at you and say, ah, a comedian. Ah, you make me laugh. Do you know when God laughs? Do you know when God laughs? say that he that sits in heaven he shall laugh at them. You see why he's laughing at them? Because they are working. They think that they are working hard. Eh? But when he will give feedback, 
they will realize that this their work is, is nothing. So you will first laugh at them. Okay. So the most important integrity or image that the believer should strive to hold is his image in the sight of the Lord. What does the Lord think of him? What does God call you? That's the question I'm asking you. When they talked about John, when the Lord was speaking about John, he said, I say unto you, I'm more than in what? A prophet. That John was a prophet and John was more than a prophet. What is more than a prophet? If they, say, if they describe somebody to you and they say, you say, who is this person? He's a lecturer. The man says, yes, he's a lecturer. But he is more than a lecturer. What is more than a lecturer? That's what is, is going on here. He says, he is pro- he's a prophet, no doubt. But he is more than a prophet. You see? Next verse, verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So you need, this is what will make you understand what he means when he says more than a prophet. Are you getting what I'm saying? Give me those two verses together so you get the point. That please, Everybody, just pay attention, right? Pay attention. He says that, what went he out for to see? I, I, what I'm handling now is, he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Because the one who cut out your genealogy for you, eh, he's the one that should have the most paramount testimony about the affairs of your life, about your life. And my prayer is, oh God, please, please. Let me not call myself something that I am not. Let me, let, let me not do that. I, I have seen people who have given themselves accolades, appellations that God has not placed on them. I remember some time ago, I was talking to, to one of my, one of my guys and I was like, ah, I was talking to this person and this person said that you are his father in the Lord. And the man said, really? See, I'm just knowing that there is a possibility that I come to God and say, God forbid, though, his example I'm using. I come to God and say, Sir, have you considered Pastor Pius? He's a great prophet. And the Lord says, Really? He's a prophet? I don't know him. Eh, you don't know him, but he, he bears the title of prophet. Say, is that so? Maybe you should come and prophesy for me. You see, my interest is that I should not bear a title and I should not carry upon myself an honor that he did not give to me. If you look at scripture, you will see as touching our work for the Lord. The Bible says that no man bears this honor on himself except him that is called of God, as was Aaron. This is the testimony of the Lord. A prophet, I say unto you, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. So the guy is a prophet, Jesus says. And the guy is more than a prophet. So what is more than a prophet about him? Okay? Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is what? Written. Behold, I send my messenger. So this is Malachi chapter 3. I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So, I send my messenger before thy face is what? What is it? Hello, what is it? It's prophecy, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay. I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So Jesus is saying, John is a prophet, number one. John is also prophecy. 
That is why he says he is a prophet and he is more than a prophet. He is prophet. He's a prophet. He is also the fulfillment of prophecy. There is no... Next verse, verse 11. Verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. This is against the backdrop of what he has said in chapter in verse 9 and in verse 10. That John is a prophet, number one. Number two, he is more than what? A prophet. And he explained what that means by more than a prophet. This is he of whom was written. I behold, I send my messenger before thee. And in quoting this, Jesus was referring to prophecy to say that John was not just a prophet, John was also the fulfillment of prophecy. And he went on to say, among them that are born of a woman, they had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There had not been anybody before John eh, that was both a prophet and the fulfillment of prophecy. It's either they were a fulfillment of prophecy or they were a prophet. Are you getting what I'm saying? There were children like that in the Old Testament that were a fulfillment of prophecy. And that's just what they were. They were a fulfillment of prophecy. John was not just a fulfillment of prophecy. John was a prophet. And Jesus now said that of them, among them that are born of a woman, aha, we have gained height in the spirit. Among them that are born of women, they had not risen a greater than John. Remember that Gabriel had said, he shall be what? Great in the sight of the Lord. When the Lord is looking at this man, what the Lord is seeing is a great man. So, before the Lord, his reputation is what? He is great. My question to you is, what is your testimony? before the Lord. What's, what's the reputation that you have? So that you don't appear before men. And men see you are a great man. Then the testimony of God is not even, not even a recruit. He's far away from the main road. Let's go back to Luke chapter 1. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of the Lord, the guy shall be great. God called him a prophet. What does God call you? God says, and these are questions you need to answer. If you have no answer to those questions, you'll be missing the target. You'll be missing the target. We have, there is, Revelation says that, a white stone shall be given unto you, and that on that white stone there shall be a name. And that name, eh? That name. The one that holds the stone, he knows the name that is on it. And the God that gave it to him, he knows the name that is on it. What does he call you? That's what I'm asking you. Are you great in his sight? Or are you little in his sight? Even if you are little in his sight as are today, the good news is that the little one shall become a thousand. There is still room for improvement. Aha. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Then this was his consecration. And shall drink neither wine nor what? Strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from the mother's womb. Okay. Listen to this. Listen to this. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Was his reputation before the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Was his consecration. Do you know your consecration? Do you know your own? And I need you to understand that when this was being spoken. Drinking wine or drinking strong drink was not a sinful activity. It was normal for people to drink wine and strong drink. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? It's the same way you drink Coke today or Ferus or whatever it is that you are drinking. It was. That was how common it was. Then they came and said of this man, he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. As touching his own ordination, his own call, this is what his consecration will be. He shall not drink wine. He shall not drink strong drink. Okay. Now, you remember that when Jesus came and was speaking of John, he said, John the Baptist came neither eating nor what? Nor drinking. And the people said, what did he have? A demon. So his consecration was not just a private affair. It was something that everybody knew that this was what his consecration was. Consecration is not, it's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, it's not a hidden something. They are touching your specific coordination. It is, it is going to be factored into that frame, into that your ordination that with regards to your, your, your activity, this is going to be the detail of your consecration. For some of you, and you see, it is not the responsibility of anybody to impose your consecration on you. Staying away from sin is not part of the consecration. On the specific level. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the consecration of the believer on it. You know, I talked about common grace. I'm talking about common grace. It is the responsibility of the believer at the general level to stay away from sin. All of us are to stay away from sin. Don't say, well, it is the pastor that will preach on Sunday that should not sin. Stay away from sin. Stay away from sin. You may not want to ask, what is sin? Because what may be seen to you may not be seen to me. That's not true. It's not true. God is clear about the things that break his command. Are you getting what I'm saying? And for a reference, the Ten Commandments is a good place to start. Don't be a false witness. Some of you can lie more than APC. At, at, the, at, the, slightest, at the slightest provocation, you just change the story. Even when there is nothing to lose, Listen to me. In Psalm 15, the Bible says, Who shall ascend unto your holy hill? He went on to say that the people that have what? A clean hand. Right? They have a pure heart. He now says, In whose lips is what? No guile. Alright? There is no guile in his lips. So that is Psalm 15, Psalm 24. In whose lips there is no guile. That means... When he talks, you can trust the words of his mouth. Don't lie for, don't just lie because you are, you are joking. It's a joke now. Lie is lie. Are you getting what I'm saying? Huh. So, sin at the general level is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about sin at the general level. That's the consecration of the average believer. That your garment should always be white. And your head should not lack ointment at any time. However, as touching your specific assignment, your specific purpose in the earth, it is now going to be your responsibility to find out what is the specific or what are the specifics of my ordination. As it was said about John that even though in this day when this man was to be born, John was not, I mean, drinking of wine or strong drink was not sinful. It wasn't sinful. It was something that everybody drank for entertainment, for refreshment. However, if this man was to, now, if you go to the book of Numbers, I think chapter 6 or so, right? What's there about? When you talk about the consecration of the Levites, you find out that part of the consecration of the Levites, of, of the Nazarite mother, part of the consecration of the Nazarite was that their hair should not be cut. Okay. 
Is it a sin to cut your hair? Is it a sin to cut your hair? Some of us, our beauty is when our hair is cut. Because if you leave our hair alone, it disgraces us. But when you cut it, you now begin to look like a human being. If it was sinful for your hair to be cut, then that would not be a specific consecration. Are you getting what I'm saying? However, God now said, if you are going to be a Nazarite unto me, that is separated unto me, for the period of that consecration, no razor should come upon your head. And let me not even go into the, the, the specifics of that, but every one of us has to know what the specific of your consecration is because it is going to be part of the manual. It's going to be part of the manual. And how do you find this thing? You find it in the place of prayer. These are prophetic revelations that God gives. They are prophetic revelations. You will find out that after you have prayed for a while, God will now come and tell you, stop watching any film where they are, any movie where they are killing people. Don't stop it. If they are killing people in the movie, there is bloodshed. Don't watch it. You will now be wondering why. And he will say, he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and he shall watch no violent movies. You now not be saying, but see, Pastor Pius is watching violent movie now. Because Pastor Pius, if they are not shooting people, he will not watch the movie. When he collects the movie from me, he will first ask you, are they killing people there? <laughs> yeah, because it, it, make, it, it makes you happy. You know when you see, we went to, some years ago, we went to, to Benin. Um, we went to, so we went to see a movie in Benin. And while we were in the, t- in the movie theater, it was, it was John Wick. You know, you know, you know John Wick. Ha. So, <laughs> that last scene, that particular part, that last scene, when he killed that guy in, the, um, in that house where you're not supposed to kill people, when he threw that shot, my guy spoke in tongues. He laughed. He gave ventilation. Ah, he was happy. <laughs> so, the activity itself, in and of itself, is not a sinful thing. You like seeing people die. It's okay. But when they come to you and they say, He shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and He shall watch no violent movies, the entertainment that people will ordinarily get from it, you have to strive. Eh? Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh. I remember there was a period in my life when I was banned from watching football. I was, I meanwhile, I grew up with an ardent love for it. I loved to watch football. The ladies may not understand how we like watching people run around the pitch, but, but I loved it. I'm not talking about club football though, because in club football I was dead. So I, I, you see this thing people used to do, and they say, we are buying them next week. Nobody argued like me. I said, you are, if you hear me talk, you think I have the money in my back pocket. <laughs> I said, ah! Say, you, see, we are going to buy. You see, wait and see. Let, let us, let the window not. You, uh, so one day, he came and said, you see that football team? Shut it down. And I did not know for how long it will happen. I remember there was a particular day. It was, maybe, I can't remember the year, but I think it was either a World Cup final or in Nations Cup final, one of one of those. I think it was in Nations Cup final, right? Maybe that was even the final that Nigeria took the cup. One of those, I think one of those. In my hostel, there was this excitement. You know our male hostel, how people are excited to watch the ball. And my heart was not even beating. You know how your parents will tell you, don't go outside. But you are inside though. But in reality, you are outside. It, it, was, it was nothing to me. It was nothing to me. He saw how invested I was in the matter. And for the period of time, that it, it lasted for so maybe five years or so, or, or thereabouts. Even till now, I don't care. Even when he resumed it, I, I don't care. If I have the opportunity to watch it, I watch it. If I don't have the opportunity, the last time I tried to watch that one there, 
that they went and did what they did. After they scored the first goal, I just went inside the room because, I mean, the point is, it will not necessarily be sinful, but as a person who will be great in the sight of the Lord, you will have to find out beyond his reputation to you, what is your contribution to this thing that you are about to enter into? What is your specific consecration? What is it? He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. I have met people with strange, strange consecrations. Consecrations I am not sure I myself can live with. Strange ones. Strange ones. But the idea is that God should be free eh, to prescribe your consecration to you and you would follow suit. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Yeah. So, your reputation in the sight of the Lord is one thing. You want to. And let me tell you, friends. You see, there's one person you cannot mock. You cannot deceive. It is God. If you are not serious, God knows you are not serious. You can deceive everybody. You can't deceive God. If you are not, you know, we come and we sing, I'm devoted to your praise. When you sing that song, God is looking at the heart of people. He knows the people that are truly devoted to his praise. He knows. All things are made bare before him. That's a person... And you see, it is easy for people that do not know you to love you and respect you. Are you with me? They don't know you. And it's easy for you to respect somebody like that that you do not know at all. Say, ah, what a great man. He talks so well. He's tall. It's okay to love people like that that you do not know. But to know somebody or to be known and to be loved and respected is no mean feat. The Lord that knows all men, his testimony about John was that he was great. So great that none that was born before him or born after him outside of the kingdom was as great. Are you with me? In the sight of the Lord. Meanwhile, listen to me. Listen to me. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, the same Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, the testimony of, G- of the Lord about John was that of all those that are born of women, none has a reason that is greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is what? He that is what? Least in the kingdom of heaven is what? is greater than he. Aha! So you see that there is a very interesting thing going on here. In the sight of the Lord, somebody can both be great, great and be small. Are you with me? You didn't get that. Jesus did not say that notwithstanding, he that is in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That's not what Jesus said. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus said, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven. That means even in the kingdom of heaven, there is graduation. There is graduation. In holiness, there is graduation. Even inside the kingdom of heaven. We are not all holy at the same level. I hope you know that. All of us are not holy together. There are, there are people that as you are like this, you are holier than them. And somebody should, don't allow anybody to bully you. Are you holier than me? They are, so each one they are talking like this, are you holier than me? Sometimes be bold to say yes. Are you with me? Are, are you getting what I'm saying? If as a young lady, because you have those kinds of things, you are a young lady, you are living with another girl who is a roommate. This lady lives 
the room by 5 p.m. on Friday. Eh? And goes to her boyfriend's place. Stays there the weekend. Comes back after church on Sunday. So that means they went to church together. Then she now came back after church. And you call her attention to it and say, Sister, you are singing in the choir. This is not the way that children of God should behave. And she asked you, So are you holier than me? Your answer should be yes. Don't let people bully you with holiness. That Are you with me? The Bible calls God the holiest of all. When we say that there is none holy as the Lord, do you know what that means? It means that we are not, we are not on the same level with holiness. Even when you come to the tabernacle, you will see that that place is graduated according to holiness. There is the outer court, there is the holy place, and there is the holiest of all. There is the most holy place. I am saying that there is a sense in which the people that are in the kingdom of heaven stand on equal footing. But there is a sense in which we do not. There is graduation in the kingdom. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? There is graduation in the kingdom. There, is, there, there, is, there are levels to this thing. There, is, there are realms. There are levels. Jesus did not say notwithstanding he that is in the kingdom of heaven is greater. He said notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven. And if you even know the Bible in passing, if you even know it at all, you will realize that even amongst servants of God in light, there are servants of God that God desires more of them than they are currently producing or they are currently giving. That is why there are servants whose works will be preserved and those whose works will not be. Whose works will be destroyed by fire. However, Jesus says, notwithstanding, the one who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. So there is a sense in which the people that are in the kingdom of heaven are greater than John in the sight of the Lord. But there is also a sense in which the people that are in the kingdom of heaven are also little in the sight of the Lord. You know, Jesus was saying that if anyone causes these little ones to sin, it is better that he were not born. Are you with me? It means, oh, even John, in First John, when John was writing to the church, to, the, to, the, to, to his audience, he also graduated his audience. I write unto you little children. I write unto you young men. I write unto you fathers. I am saying that even in the kingdom, there is that graduation. There are people that are little in the sight of the Lord. And little in the sight of the Lord does not mean insignificant. It does not mean insignificant. Because a Bruce Reed, will he not break? And a smoking flax, will he not quench? So that just in case your present reality is such that you are a broken reed. You know, you know a broken reed. We are just managing you. I was managing you. And we're not yet sure what to do with you. People are talking about praying every day for one hour. The day you remember to pray is when you pray your own. People are talking about doing wonderful works for God. You know, that when they enter places, devils run away and all kinds. Your own, they are still pressing you in the night. They are still struggling with things that you are not proud to talk about. But you are in the kingdom. A bruised reed, will he not what? Break. A smoking flax, will he not quench? Just in case your reality is that you are smoking. You know, do you know how to make fire? In the, you know how those fires we used to make outside? Do you know, you know what I'm talking about? It's gas that you will use. Just whoosh, whoosh. Those fires that you have to gather dry, dry stubble. You gather it together, put it, and... You know that there is a graduation. There is how you will see the smoke rising. And you know that the fire is about to come out from this thing. So you continue to... Hoo, 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 
until it, it comes out. That smoke too, there is how to quench it. You, you know what I'm talking about? That if you want to quench the fire, it's not merely because you know that if you just merely separate the, the, the sticks away and you leave it, it will burn to ashes. And you will not have charcoal to use and do what you want to do the next time. So while it is smoking, you quench it so that you can preserve its integrity and use it for future purposes. He says of the servant of the Lord that a bruised reed shall he not what break and a smoking flax he will not quench. It could be the case, listen to me, that your present situation can be properly described as one who is smoking. About, because what we see in your life now is remnant of a fire that once burned. Everything that is going on in your life is in past tense. The last tongue you spoke was in 2017. Since then, you have been struggling. You have done all that there is to be done, but nothing is coming out of it. If you attempt now to say you want to listen to a message, you sleep in between. You want to do seven day fast, you stop at day two. The day that you try, you break at ten. And it seems as if there is nothing serious that is going on in your life. Jesus will not come and laugh at you and say, see, 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 good food. That's not what he will do. Are you getting what I'm saying? And it could, it could have even been the case that you, I, I love the Lord. You see, we men of God, we preachers of the gospel, we, we can we can be too much sometimes. We see a believer who seems to be struggling. And we just conclude that they are unserious. It may even be the case that they are. Because there are those kinds of people. They are fine throughout the day, throughout the service. Once it is time for prayer, they will just begin to sleep. It, no matter what you do. I see, I, she was in she in me. I did are they doing you? What, what, what's wrong with you? Eh? What's wrong with you? Once it is time for prayer, the guy begins to sleep. And you now call him out and use him as an example. And say, see, the thing that is following you will soon catch up with you now. You see, they will soon catch up with you. The guy goes back home and is demoralized. The little smoke that was there, you just use fire and pour on it. Anytime he comes to the congregation of the righteous and he sees people praying, he says, ah, see people that God has helped me. God does not want to help me. And it could have even been the case that that has been, that's the, that's the reason why your life is not moving forward. But see Jesus, a smoking flax, will he not quench? If he meets you at that point where you are smoking, he knows, he has what it takes to turn the smoke into embers. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. So I'm saying that he does not despise the little. You may be little today, but I'm telling you that in your future there is greatness. There is greatness there. It could be the case that the best you can do is five minutes of prayer. Don't worry. Don't worry. You may live with people who are terrorizing you with their prayer life. You know, sometimes you see some prayer meetings and say, Hey God, when will I pray like this? I, even me, me like this. I even saw one today and say, people they pray. There are, people, there are people's prayer lives that you will see and you you will be a sinner. I say, God, why love you like this? It's okay. It's okay. Peter also thought like that. Remember when he denied the Lord? And he felt as if I can't be his disciple. Jesus came for him and said, Go and tell Peter that I have reason. It is because a smoking flax he will not quench. So that's your five minutes of prayer that you are doing, and you want you really, really want to go beyond it, but as if there is no steam. It's like those cars that we used to, I don't know if people still have those kind of cars now. That the car is, is going to drive well on plain ground. Once it begins to climb the hill, you can trek and pass it. You know those kind of <laughs> you know those kind of cars on plain ground. It can it can do well, but once it begins to climb a hill, 
<laughs> you, you can trek and pass and the car will just be going. Go, 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 go. That, that may be your life. That when it is time to gain altitude, eh? People will now say, ah, there is infirmity here. Don't worry. As long as you are moving, keep going like that. A smoking flax, he will not quench. He won't quench it. They call seven days fasting in church and everybody comes with their face like they are fasting. But you, you know that you used to have public holiday in the fast. You know public holiday? When you do the first day, you second day, you, you, you go on off duty. Then, and when people are praying and fasting, you are like, ah, when will I be like this? See, you may be smoking, but he will not quench you. If you stay with him, one day you will burn. I'm saying that even in the kingdom, there is graduation. There is, there is graduation. We are not all the same. But even the little ones have become a strong nation. It shall be great in the sight of the Lord. I, maybe this is a good place to pray and we'll pick this up later. But listen to me. Listen to me. It is God's intention that you enter into your full ordination. You may be looking small now. People may be despising you. You may, be, you may belong to a company of prophets. Everybody is prophesying. And you are just there. And you're like, how does it feel like to hear God? I don't know. When people say, God said to me, God said to me, you have no idea what they are talking about. The day you tried to say, God said, you know you lied. And your, your conscience was heavy. You went home and said, God, I know you didn't say it, but I you know it is because of the way they were making me feel. You are little now. A smoking flax, he will not quench. But you should not be little forever. Because he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. My intention is that every day I appear before him, I, I improve. I get better. Why? For they go from strength to strength. All them in Zion appear before the Lord. This is a good time to pray. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. I cabul a faster. Elebrasa fone ma pambre ke sobre ne velambra hasom be kababo. Kaibo se frente bo manambre visa babonda. Jai ke bora sambre ke fendo sabahai. Elambro se pala fan kabobona. Arose vele branta pavo la braska i ke velamba i brose pembora das kabona pai arose vele brandes arose vele braka bo veda ba apres kombre lisa baba na mai ile ma ponte samba akobre se vele brente sebe e shai le brose be ba vando akabo raska bo velembra. A sambre ke feto sabai ilambro se bela sabra de feto skaba bonai ele pro se fete sabrone a kem pro se pele frakambe elo se prente sabo a kambo a kambo a kambo sai ke pe felo se ba a rose prakambo la Ako bele celebre te kamba sili paponai. I gain mileage, I gain stature, I gain stature. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. I may be little today, I may be insignificant today. Yes, aha. But he shall be great. He shall be great. Rasine shall be great. He shall be great. A fella boranta scambo. A kipi fa kaporata. A friend toske bevente predeske. Ilabra se vente se bele pronto. Se pre ke donte. A sempre saba. A sempre ke peta. Rose bevele brantes. Se pre ke te se pre de vento. A copre se bevente brababa. Silebra samba. Compre se vede pa, a cambros que vede prente, se pronto se pepa la babo, cambo, 
tambo, 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 tambo. Sala vende pe fila papuda, akavu ne preske vende brante me kabo, apraske vende prente saboba. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall be great. He shall be great. He shall be great. Sam prefer the branches. Rebo go vende pe fila pe 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 de vende pe mila ma papa dama. Ako preska papa dai. Ako preska bo veteska. Je preto ska papa. Je preto ske piva labo. Je preto ske vende bo. Se prate na papa na kapo. Rebe pe le vende ma. E pre uyada. Ako pe feta ska bo. Je preto ske vende ba bo. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. That is my destiny. That is my destiny. That is my destiny. Yes. Yes. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. I remember Villa Mamo Vendembe Vezila. At the moment, I may be looking small. At the moment, I may be appearing small. But that's not my destiny. I cannot remain there. No way. I cannot remain there. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Scambi vili sumi la vene ma 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 Shaika, shaika boda Shaika bo vende be vila Se be be de be be le be 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 vila Rose be 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 Rose be le be ma ma Shaba ba bo Shaba ba 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 bo Shaba ba 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 bo ne vende Shaba ba 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 da ba bo Re be be vende shaba ba 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 Ra ba 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 Ra ba 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 Se me vile Se me vele vele ma Ro ko bo se me Shaba ba da Shaba ba ba ka ta Shaba ba bo ke be le des Sky He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Right now, I may be little. Right now, I may be small. Right now, I may be insignificant. But he shall be great. I strive towards greatness. I strive towards greatness. I can't believe the billem, me 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 ne zamone, zamone, zamone la. Ele zigili so be 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 die shababona, kabo veteska, kabo ve sabre veteske, sambro keta baba, sababa, sababa mo, sababa mama, sababa mama mo, sabre ve kambo saba, sabra des kabo ve gebrentes, sabre ve kumba. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench. Shaibe vele preteska, veto se preketele, se preteska bo vele mada. Rokeska bebe, rokeske bevita, rokeske tevelata. Se preveto se bebe, se preveto se bevele, roske bevele be. He shall be great. In the sight of the Lord, Ele me be, Ele me me be, Samu me vene me kamababa, Shaba kano bra na baska, Shaba kano me vina manas, Sama me le bre ne me nes, Skabo ne nae, Skabo me le bre tes. Skedo ve prenta kamona, kopre me ve nas kamona, ve pora kaske, roske vi le prentes. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall not drink wine. He shall not take strong drink. The details of your consecration, He gives unto you. 
you do not walk in the darkness concerning the thing that he sends your way. I live in my bed, the Namanta. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord while you strive to find out that which is yours. You want to ask the Lord, can you reveal to me the details of my consecration, the specifics of the things I am to do for you? What should be my response in keeping with your call upon my life? He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Just in case you are here and you know you are not yet great. You know you are little. You know you are little. It seems as if you are smoking. It seems you are smoking. It seems you are smoking. The fires that once burned, they are already on their way out. You want to ask the one that can help. Send me help from your holy sanctuary. Can you rekindle the flames of this fire again? Please, Lord, please. 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 Can you rekindle? Aya. 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 Ay, baba, baba. Ababa fasapa, Hebrews kepe de brentes, Shamro de ventas kapone vada. Holy, 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 alleluia. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Aha. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, 
establish the things that He has begun in our spirit. You see? Now, this is what I want the posture of your heart to look like. If you are bruised, He will not break you. If you are smoking, not quench you. If you are little, you can become great. That is his intention. And that is what I want us to put upon our heart as a prayer while we partake in the Lord's table. Because now we are coming to him who knows all things. Sees all things. And as we are fellowshipping with him in his table, we are telling him, we are asking him, please. I am smoking. Can you rekindle my fires again? I am little. But I don't think. Right now, I may be little. I, right now, I may be counted as the little one. But he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. That's the word. And so shall it be. So that if there is anything that is written about your life that is yet to see the light of day, he will bring you into it. He will tell you what are the specifications of your own particular ordination. What is my wine and strong drink that I should leave behind? Tell me. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to do it. So I'll pray a simple prayer for everyone. And then we will approach as the ushers will help us to the table and partake of the bread and the wine. While you are doing that, I would want you to pray. Now, even if it is a confession that you are making, I will be great in the sight of the Lord. You see, those days when I was doing my youth service, I will wake up in the night and for two hours I will be pacing my room my prayer for those two hours will be just a sentence. My place. My place. My place. My place. That was all I was saying. And I did that for nine months. My place. My place. My place. Let the words of my heart, my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted. So yours could just be just that simple confession. I shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Yeah, it may look as if right now I am but a little one. My opinion may not count for much, but I shall be great in the sight of the Lord. I shall be great. I shall be great. And lift your hands to heaven. Lord, in the name of Jesus. The thing that you have written for us, on us, as touching our assignment, as touching the fulfillment of your purpose in our lives, concerning that thing, we shall not be little. Concerning that matter, we shall not be little. We shall be great. Ande visa halko sofeka, envro se bina branda vakambo sofende printes kabonai. And tonight, let this communion be a symbol of our fellowship with you, 
as touching this matter as we partake of the table the one by whom we desire before whom we desire to be great he will lift us up for we come humbly before him he is the one that gives grace to the humble as we partake in your table because that the least amongst us will become as strong as David. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can we pick that song up? As the deer pants for the water.
Bella Bora Sam Bellana. I love you more than any other so much more than subjects and we are your children. Help us. Help us. By reason of our partaking in your table, if there be any who is sick amongst us, let the healing bread administer healing to that one. Every discomfort everyone with any kind of discomfort in this hall from my left hand side to my right hand side from the front to the back let your healing hand rest upon everyone none will be sick amongst us 